Let's go over some trees' basics. This is the White Tree of Gondor, for all the AU Lord of the Rings fans out there. First things first, computer scientists are weird. They tend to or like to draw trees upside down. So all the trees we see are upside down. The root is at the top. So here we have a simple tree. The top orange node is referred to as the parent, while the bottom green nodes are referred to as the children relative to that orange parent, parent node. So in this simple tree, the top node is also referred to as the, as, as the root. It's the initiation of the tree. And since the children have no children, they are referred to as leaves. They're at the end of the tree. So here we have a binary tree. And a tree is considered binary when each parent has at most two children. This is a common pattern that I really want you guys to start looking at. We're going to look at a lot of trees this week. A common pattern of these trees is that they place a preceding term in front of the word tree, and that gives you some sort of hint as to some rules that that tree will enforce. For example, here we have a binary tree, and the rules that this is enforcing is that each parent can have at most two children, right? So knowing that your data structure is a binary tree gives you those assurances. Now, we add more nodes to the tree, the gray nodes, and they're now the leaves. Why? Because they, they are now at the end of the tree. They have no further children, and the, the nodes that used to be the leaves are no longer leaves because they have children. A tree does not have to have an enforcement for the number of children contained. Like, a tree can just be a tree. It can just be something visually resembling a tree. It can just be a thing that with a bunch of branches. Uh, you know, a tree can just be a tree. So we're going to be focusing mainly on rule enforcing trees, but a tree can just be a tree. Here's a tree versus a linked list. And we also uh, touch on the code implementations in the lesson. So I'll skip over these, even though they're really good to understand at the base level, especially for the coding challenge uh, in, in these weeks, the coding challenges. One, one important thing to review is just general tree vocabulary and how tree terms are always relative and in motion. So for example, this L node, if we take this subtree in isolation, that L node is the root node of that tree, right? While also being the parent of, of, of EFG, the children nodes. But if you traverse up, you get to the eventual, like actual root node of the whole tree, which is P. So Remember, an important thing to remember is key is whatever data is stored inside the node. So the key of the tree's root node is P, right? So alpha for the coding challenge. The height of the tree is just how many layers the tree is, uh, typically zero index because this is computer science, and leaf nodes are just the, the end of a branch, right? Sometimes trees can actually cure quite naturally. So uh, fi the file system in most of our computers uh, uses kind of a tree hierarchy, right? You have some folder and it opens further folders and you get to the end of that folder and nothing else opens, right? So that's a pretty good example of one that just kind of happens. If your data can be stored hierarchically, using a tree is a great resource to go with because it gives you assurances for searching and sorting of data. Uh, I will I will caveat using a tree specific to your uses will give you a lot of assurances for searching and sorting of data. For example, uh, well, let's look at a balanced binary search tree. Uh, this balanced binary search tree, you can tell it actually enforces quite a few rules. It's it's got two terms in front of uh, three terms in front of of the tree term. So let's let's analyze these rules. One binary search trees have to be as a whole, binary trees. And if we look back to binary trees, binary trees enforce the rule that each parent can have at most two children, right? So if we go back to the, the BBSC, the balanced binary search tree, uh, this is a binary, binary tree, so that's good. The left subtree of a node, so if, if we're looking at this node, the left subtree contains or must contain only nodes with keys lesser than that node's key and that is followed here. The right subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys greater than the node's keys. And I'm just using the root node as an example, but this rule holds up for all nodes. 
And then each node's left and right subtrees must also be binary search trees. So further kind of like recursive rule stacking on top of this tree. And this, these rules give you a lot of assurances as, as a developer, as an algorithm designer. Why? Because it makes searching and searching very, very efficient. So say you want to you want to see whether this tree contains the key 10. What happens is you can design your algorithm with these rules assurances, right? So we can start at the top and we'll start our searching algorithm at the very top. And we'll say, we are looking for 10. Is 10 greater than or less than nine? It is greater than, so go right. And then we start the algorithm process again. Is 10 greater than or less than 12? It's less than, so we go to the left. And now we've hit 10 and we found it very efficiently. Can you imagine? Otherwise, we'd, we'd need to brute force, right? We'd need to lay everything out in an array and just basically run a for loop on it to see if 10 is contained. This cuts our search time immensely. And as we see in the Merkle tree uh, video for uh, the day following this one, trees are just generally very good at, at increasing in, in, in N, the size of your input but not increasing. So relative to N increasing, your, your algorithm complexities tend to remain logarithmic relative to linear increase of N. All that means is as you increase and pack more, more items into your trees, the searching algorithms that you need to you know, traverse them and search for stuff don't complicate themselves that much more. They, they just grow but at a not that rapid pace, which is really good. This is what we want out of our, our algorithms. Of course, we want the most efficient ones for, for everything. So knowing uh, knowing this, I'll, I'll skip the trivia. You can pause it and, and answer it if you want. This is what I mean. So as N increases linearly, so as we pack more elements into a tree like a binary search tree, our search time only increases logarithmically, which is really great. That's a that's an awesome assurance out of this data structure, just just because we we make it enforce certain rules and we can write our algorithms with those rules in mind. Awesome, right? So this is a a primer on trees. We have much more in the in the text portion of today. And get ready for Merkle trees and Patricia Merkle trees uh, further in, in this week.